Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this realistic looking miniature bread in less than 10 minutes. And if you're thinking, wait, this topic sounds familiar. Well, that's because I already made this video about the same thing 7 years ago. And it was one of the very first videos I ever made. I kept it very short, giving out just the basics of the technique without going into much detail. And understandably, people had a lot of questions. So I decided to make an updated version of the video to answer those questions and hopefully make this really awesome technique easier to understand. Let's start with an overview of the supplies needed for this technique to work. Polymer clay, baking soda or baking powder, water, and an oven to bake your miniature bread in. Any brand of polymer clay will work. I have used several different brands over the years and sometimes even mixing different brands together and they all work the same. One thing to keep in mind, for this technique to work, your clay has to be properly conditioned. And the trick to make sure that your polymer clay is conditioned is to roll it into a ball and then flatten it between your fingers. If the edge of the disc is smooth and even, your clay is conditioned. And you can find a quick hack to condition clay in merely seconds in this video linked in the top right corner. A question I have received quite often is if you can make miniature bread with this method using air dry clay. Now, I must admit, I'm really not an expert when it comes to air dry clay. I hardly ever use it and up to this day I never tried to make miniature bread with it. However, I wanted to be thorough so I dug up this old block of air dry clay. Unfortunately, because it's a million years old and it's air dry, it was almost <laughs> completely dry. I tried to mix it with water to make it softer, which I'm not even sure you're supposed to do, but it seemingly worked, so I proceeded to mix it with baking powder and I formed two little bread shapes. I let one air dry for a few hours and the other I briefly baked in the oven. And this is the result. This is the oven baked one, and while it looks nothing like the polymer clay ones, I have to say I don't hate it. I think it does look pretty lifelike, doesn't it? And this one is the one I let air dry and it looks fairly similar. The one I baked in the oven has a rougher, lighter external surface, but on the inside they are very similar. The consistency is kind of elastic and I couldn't really cut it, at least not neatly. Also keep in mind that, again, I use an ancient block of clay that I tried to revive with water, so perhaps using a brand new block of clay will yield different results. Have you tried this technique with air dry clay? If you did, would you like to share your experience in the comments? I'm curious. Now, let's move to another frequently asked question. Should I use baking powder or baking soda? And the answer is that you can use both. However, they yield different results, and I'm going to show you exactly what the differences are, and I'll give you my opinion on which one is the better option. And just a quick self-promotional side note, if you want to make these cute little cutting boards, which by the way are 100% paper, you can find the SVG and Silhouette Studio files to cut them with a Cricut or Silhouette cutting machine in my shop. I'll drop a link in the description box in case you're interested. But let's go back to the video. Let's start with baking powder. As I mentioned earlier, the first step is to make sure that your polymer clay is properly conditioned. Now, for this technique to work, you need to mix one part of polymer clay with one part of baking powder, measured in volume. A good trick to do this is using two identical spoons or teaspoons and filling one with clay and the other with baking powder. Set the spoon of baking powder aside for a moment and start working a little water into your polymer clay piece. Add water a little at a time, kneading it into the clay so that it gets absorbed completely. And keep adding water until your clay has this soft and sticky consistency, kind of like a soft chewing gum. At this point, you can begin to work the baking powder into the mix. As with water, it's important to add the baking powder just a little at a time, waiting until what you've already added is perfectly mixed with the clay before you add more. After a while, you should notice that your clay has become quite dry. It doesn't stick to your fingertips when you touch it, and when you pull it apart, it should have this almost puff pastry-like texture. When this happens, simply add a little more water and keep mixing. Repeat this process until you have used all of the baking powder. Then, add more water until the clay is very soft. It should look almost like a thick, grainy spread. Think of crunchy peanut butter that's been stored in the fridge. Work it briefly between your fingers, until it's no longer excessively sticky. Then, quickly shape it into a little loaf, or whatever shape you want your miniature bread to have. 
I've noticed that when I'm using baking powder, the clay rises almost immediately. So as you're shaping it, you'll probably notice that the clay is already beginning to rise. In my experience, miniature bread made with baking powder doesn't rise in the oven, so the size of your little loaf will remain unchanged. So now it's time to bake our miniature bread. I'll tell you more about the baking process later, but for now, just know that you can use the same baking times and temperature you generally use when baking polymer clay. And this is what this polymer clay and baking powder miniature bread looks like after baking. As you can see, the surface is fairly smooth, but it has a few teeny tiny cracks here and there. It's time to cut our bread. I find that it's best to use a razor blade to slice the bread, so be careful. Unlike my experiment with air dry clay, this one made with polymer clay has a dry consistency and it should be very easy to cut. And here's the moment of truth. When sliced, our miniature bread should look like this. As you can see, this bread has a few fairly large pores mixed with a lot of smaller ones. So what happens if we use baking soda instead of baking powder? Let's find out. The recipe is pretty much the same. One part of polymer clay and one part of baking soda instead of baking powder. The process is identical. Soften the clay with water. When it's really soft and sticky, begin to add baking soda and repeat until you have finished all of the baking soda. At the end, the clay should have that same creamy, sticky and grainy appearance. Nonetheless, I like what happens when using baking powder. In this case, the rising doesn't occur until you start to actually bake the clay. Don't expect it to double in size, but it does rise quite a bit. Right away, you can see the difference with the miniature bread loaf made with baking powder. This one, made with baking soda, has a lot more cracks across its surface. The inside of the bread looks very different as well. The pores are much tinier and their placement is denser. Let's see both versions side by side to compare them. See how different they look? But which one is better? Well, that depends. I think that baking powder is better suited to making bread types with large pores, like sourdough bread or baguettes. On the other hand, baking soda works best for bread types with a denser crumb, like banana bread or rye bread. Baking soda produces a nicer crust, whereas baking powder will get you prettier slices. So it's really up to you and what you want to achieve. Now let's talk a bit more about the baking phase. The question I've received a lot is, should I bake the bread right away or can it wait? In my experience, it's better to bake the clay as soon as you finish shaping your miniature bread. I've noticed that the longer I wait to bake, the more fragile the clay becomes after baking. And when I try to slice it, it breaks apart and crumbles. So my suggestion is to bake your miniature bread as soon as you can. Finally, I wanted to quickly show you a couple of examples of miniature bread gone wrong. And I'll tell you exactly what went wrong so you can avoid making the same mistakes. For this one, I didn't use enough water. The dough didn't have that peanut butter-like consistency and as a result, it didn't rise as much. And as you can see, there are areas that didn't rise at all. In this case, I used about two-thirds of polymer clay and just one-third of baking powder and the pores are much smaller than when I used a one-to-one -one proportion. And for this one, I used about two-thirds of baking soda and one-third of polymer clay. And the bread rises beautifully, but it crumbles as soon as you touch it. And that's all for today's video. I tried to be as thorough as possible, but if you have any more questions or doubts, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help. Just a reminder, if you want to make these cute little cutting boards, I have the SVG and Silhouette Studio templates in my shop, and you can find the link in the description box. I really hope you're gonna try this truly awesome technique. See you next time, bye!